Hey guys, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan and welcome to yet another advanced Java Chess Engine tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to finish up the making of moves so that the board, internal board in our engine will be identical to the graphical user interface and we will also start to look at the Go method. And in the next tutorial we might be bringing all of this into Arena to uh, see if it actually works as it's supposed to. So let's get started here. I've made a few modifications here and there. Uh, one of the things that I did was you'll notice that I had always said that uh, each move was four characters long followed by a space. But as you can see in this position, for instance, there is a pawn promotion to this bishop up here on h8 and you can see that it is five characters long. So I had to make a bit of an exception and when we're looping through the moves, instead of just having a substring of, I believe it used to be five, now we look for that first space. So we find that first space character and we have the substring of what follows that first space character. So that was just a slight little modification, little things like that here and there. And then I made a few major changes to the algebra to move method, which looks at all the moves that our engine generates that are legal and then finds the one that matches the algebraic notation as depicted by the input string. So what I have done is I have set the from and the to, which I think we had before, are the inputs starting square and the destination square. So this should be unique to the move. And then what I have is the start and the end integers, which represent the current move, because the moves will lit be a list of a bunch of moves. So every move we look at to see if it matches the input, it will determine its start and its end. And it does so by all of these ifs, depending on if it's upon promotion and impassant, because the format is slightly different for all of these. And this code was more or less copied from the moves. And, in, and specifically, the make move method, wherever that is, right here. So you can see we have the basic if statements and it's more or less the same. And that just establishes our start and our end. And then what we do is we say if the start is the same as the from and the end is, end is the same as the to. Now this should mean that we have the correct move. But I had to add one other if statement which said either the last character is a space so, for instance, the fifth character, so this one, this move here, B1, A1, is a space. Or, in this case, it is not a space because it's a promotion. And then I had to say, if it is not a promotion, so the or statement, then if the upper case, so in this case it would be a B, uh, G7, H8, B, so uppercase B, is equivalent to... And this is the uppercase of our move in our moves list. Character I plus 2 is that move. And I get that from moves and where the pawn makes a move right about here. We can see that this is the 0th character first and this is the second. And that is the promotion type. And if those are equal, then we know for sure we have the right move and we can proceed. Now, all of this code I have added here to deal with castling rights and impassants and so on. Now, I did make a few modifications. Uh, you'll notice, for instance, that our impassant method here and our castling methods are above all our regular make moves. And Unlike that, in perfed, they actually happened at the end, like so. Now, the reason for this is because in perfed, the order didn't matter. 
because WK and WB were or WK and BK were not affected by all of these make moves since they were stored in the temporary uh, bit boards, uh, bishop queen or uh, black queen temporary. And so in this case, since we are modifying the original, we need to call this first so that these make moves do not change the white pawn, which would mess up our en passant method. So I just made a few of my minor adjustments here and there, and it should work correctly. So if we run this, what I do is I go into Arena, and I establish this position. Uh, I make a bunch of moves, so I've already made a castling move uh, in the past. Here's a promotion move, and you hit F4, and you copy that move down. And then you paste it in here, and you type in print, and you check, does that move match the move in Arena visually? And I look around, and it looks pretty good. So if I were to uh, whoops, uh, just set this up, for instance, new, all right, hmm. Sometimes Arena just does that. It has a bit of a freezing glitch. I don't know exactly what uh, goes on with it. Um, but it just seems something wrong with Arena 3. So if I make some, just some random moves here, uh, not, I'm just trying to do a castle here. So give it uh, some opportunities for that. And there we go. Now we get a castle. And now if we hit F4, we can, all right, we can take in, just waiting for it to, to finish there. I don't know what's going on here. All right, here's our position. Ah, just going to command stop. All right, it was pondering or something there. Okay, so if we take this position, start position, and these series of moves, we copy them, and now we paste them into our program and hit print. We should see, yes, here we go, castling has happened. Now I also have checked, castling rights have been disabled properly. I've done all these verifications myself, and feel free to do the same. But it should represent the right board at least 99% of the time. I might have a glitch that I haven't found yet. Uh, the next thing that I did was I modified this input go. So I don't have a search function yet. So what we're just going to do is look at all the legal moves from our position and just pick a random move. So here's how I did it. First, depending on the side to move, I generate the list of moves. Then I have an index, and it represents the location which move it is. Uh, is going to start from based on random. So it takes random and it multiplies it by the move length divided by 4, which is the number of moves. So a random number multiplied by the number of moves times 4, because what we need to do, and we floor it. Uh, so we round down basically. And by multiplying by 4, now we get the character uh, index instead of the move number. And then we take that move and get the substring, so we get just that one move, and we call move to algebra. Because when we print out, we don't print out in our own engine's uh, um, format, we print out in algebraic notation. Now, in this algebraic notation, it only works for uh, regular moves, uh, so not uh, promotions and so on, but it's just a real simple code so far to output the basic notation. So if I hit go from this position, we get A2 to A3. And you can see that A2 to A3 is that pawn move right up here. Or if you prefer looking at it like this, whoops, uh, it looks like that. So A2 to A3 right there. And that is basically how it works. So now we have an engine that does respond 
and set up the board correctly based on the UCI format. In the next tutorial, we're going to work on improving this move to algebra so it includes everything and maybe even connecting it to Arena so that we can actually make sure that our engine is working correctly in practice. Until next time, enjoy chess.